Hi everyone, and thank you for purchasing the Image Marquee Shopify section by QuickCode. In this video, I'll be showing you how to actually use it. So if you haven't installed yet, please refer to the separate video included in the package. And you also have access to a PDF with instructions. So to get started, head over to your theme editor, navigate to the page you want to add the section to. Over on the left, click on Add Section and search for the section that you want to add. To images marquee. So over on the right, we have a bunch of settings that we can, uh, we'll get to later, that we can adjust things. And over on the left uh, is where we add the images. So you can add up to 16 images. So let's just start by adding about five or six. Um, go in here, let's select this. Oops. more now generally these images should be about the same it should be the same height width doesn't really matter as you can see each image here is different width i'll get to that in a minute um but after we add the images we can also set a, a link for each of the images if we want. Um, so let's just do the broccoli and we'll link it to a blog or a post or whatever. Um, once we've done that for all of them, click on the set a, uh, section, main section on the left, and then over on the right, we have a bunch of different options. So first we have section title, so you can see um, the ingredients, you can call it. Next, we have uh, HTML element. This is good for two reasons. One is for uh, better SEO. Um, search engines uh, rank different types of headlines or different types of texts inside the te inside the uh, the page for importance. So we have an option for H1 to H6 where H1 is the most important um, and it gets the, the, the most weight. Uh, so you'd wanna put keywords in there and so on, but it's usually recommended to use a, only one H1 on each page. So usually that's just the, um, the page title. Um, otherwise you would use H2 and, and down. So we'll just keep this at H2 right now. And the other benefit uh, is that with your existing theme, there's already settings for different types of those headings, like styling settings, font size, font weight, color, etc. So if you don't want to go in and, and edit these individually in the uh, in our settings, then you can set set this one and it'll um, inherit the styles from your theme. So moving on, we have uh, different types of image settings. So we can choose original, which is the original dimension or we can choose a landscape um, and it's, you can't really see it in this, in this image. Maybe we can add one more. Let's do this one, for instance, and it'll crop the image uh, all the same height to a landscape sort of image. Um, if you want cropping in that way, where each side, each image is a different, a completely different height. Let's hide this for now. Go back here. We also have portrait. So you can see that they're being cropped and they are more tightly close together. Um, we can also do square like that and still. But in this case, I think we'll keep it in original. You can adjust the height of the of all of the images. So you can make them really big or really small that 
Uh, we have the option for image height on mobile. Since mobile screens are much smaller, you can adjust the the height lower by just looking at the mobile view. And let's make it much smaller like that. Back to desktop. Another option here to fade the opacity on an image hover when there's a link. So if I click set that up, remember we put a link on the broccoli. So if I hover over, you see it becomes a little bit faded out, um, and which signifies a link. Um, on the others, there's no link, so nothing happens. Next, we have an option to blend the images with the background. In this case, um, we'll be able to, as you can see, the image has, all these images have a, a white background. And if we want it to blend in with the, with the grayish, color so we just click that and boom there's no no background on this image specifically there's a little bit of gray in the image so it's it it doesn't completely disappear so you have to be careful of the images that you choose but you can see the other images blend in really nicely um you so usually it's these types of images where it's like a pack shot of an image with a neutral background and preferably white as white becomes transparent in this uh in this setting moving on we can add gap between the images so we can move that and it separates them it's you can notice that a little bit more when we remove the the gap actually let's add in a background color so you can really notice that difference there so you can do the gap between them like that and we can blend the images in like so next we have image speed so as you can see it moves at a certain pace and it's a, basically a calculation of how many images there are and how wide the screen is um, the lower the number the faster the speed so you can see or i can make it go really really slow like that and as you can see if i hide some of these then the speed also changes as i said it depends on how many images we actually have running next we have direction of movement so it's from right to left or from left to right section styling so it's for the entire section itself as you saw, we can set the background color. We can set the width um, to be a regular width, and then it's all contained within this max width setting. So we can make it much smaller or much bigger. Or we can set full width, and full width just expands to the complete edges of the screen. Next, we have um, top and bottom margin, which is the space above and below the section. So if we set the bottom margin, we have more space there, or top margin, more space at the top. There's probably gonna be more content if you wanna give more breathing room, and that's that. Uh, top, top and bottom padding is the space within the section. So if you want more space over there, you could click that, and then section padding, so it has a little bit more area below the images like that we have the same margin and padding settings for mobile as well so they can be separate section title position as you can see the the title right now is within the section if you want it to be outside then the only caveat is that we have to have this as regular and then the section goes outside Otherwise, it'll be inside. You can set the alignment. Now, if we're doing full screen and it's at the very edge and you don't like that, then setting the max width will adjust the positioning of it. Like that. Obviously, if it's center aligned, it doesn't really matter. We can set the, set the title color. 
we can set the font. So if we want a custom font, we can click that. And then from this, uh, from this list that Shopify provides, we can set a different font. And if you have a uh, manually installed custom font, you can put the CSS code right in there, which is basically looks like this. You would put that in there. Set the font weight. And some fonts don't have these installed. So let's say here we'd want to go, see this one doesn't have a bold. So if we choose this one, And then you can see we can set the different font weights for it. Next, we can give top and bottom margin for the title. So we can add additional space here. It's just another way to add some more space and then some more margin at the bottom, giving more space between the images and the title. And we can select font size. So if it's at zero, it's taking it's inheriting from the theme itself, or we can enlarge it however we'd like. Line height is, is more relevant when you have a long line of text and it goes down to two lines, so you can give more space um, between the two lines. And letter spacing, you can adjust that right there. Next, we have the same settings for the uh, title <clears throat> on mobile. A couple more things I just wanted to show you here. Um, obviously, you can move and drag the order of the images around. You can hide them. And as you can see, when you have, let's say, just two images, then they repeat and the speed changes. So you can play with the speed and make it go, go faster if you'd like, like so. And that's it. So thank you again. And we hope that this section helps you achieve your website goals. If you have any questions or any issues, please don't hesitate to reach out to us via the support page on the website.